find your passion, it ignites you as a person. You just feel awesome. Hello, my Jiu Jitsu sisters. What is going on? I am getting ready to go do some Muay Thai sparring and I read um, some comments of yours, uh, one in particular, Lucy. Um, I read her comment and that inspired me to sit down and make a quick video before I go and train. Um, so let's, let's get into it. So the purpose of this video um, is for women who have experienced sexual assault in the past and want to go out and start dating. And this video is going to give you information on what to look for and how to navigate in that realm in the most safe and smartest way possible because some of these things I didn't even know until I started jujitsu and things just <laughs> become revealed. You know what I'm saying? All right. Um, so first thing that we have to talk about is touch. Now, what happens when, <laughs> you can't even see that. Oh my God, I will get good at this one day. I'm a white belt and whiteboards, <laughs> obviously, um, is touch. Okay, so what happens when a person, like I won't be sexist, this can happen to both a male or a female, so, but if I just use female, know that it can be for a male as well. Um, so basically, when a person gets sexually assaulted, um, they are then more sensitive to touch. And when you have a like predator looking for victims, um, what they look for is the sensitivity to touch and they will test for that. So what really sucks is that for the females that are sensitive to touch because of a prior um, assault, then try to date, they are even more likely to be a victim if they happen to run across somebody looking for those sensitivities. So um, if you are a female sensitive to touch, the best thing that you can do is to go to a jujitsu class and start getting accustomed to touching again because that will heighten your immunity to being controlled by touch. If you have experienced sexual assault before, like I encourage you to just go straight to jujitsu because then you can start learning things that will immediately be of use to you. Um, I'll give you one story of an example that happened to me. I was about three or three to five months into jujitsu. Like I was, I had started rolling and I remember my roommate at the time, he was like, Crystal, you know, you wanna go. I wanna see what this jujitsu thing is all about. And so we went and I, you know, took his back and slapped on a rear naked choke. And he was like, oh my God, like you had a plan. I didn't even have a plan. So when you do jujitsu, you are already at a severe advantage against most people because they don't even have a plan. Okay. So, <laughs> but let's talk more um, about touch and things that you need to look out for when you are dating. Um, and I will use the example of my five years of experience fighting with men <laughs> on the mats, okay? Um, so if you are on a date, okay, um, so if you are on a date, um, one question you may ask the person is, uh, so I'm going to explain this to you that way you can calculate the statistical probability that you would be able to take on somebody if things did get physical. Okay. Because, um, I have fought a lot of white belt men and most, uh, people just off the streets could not bust a grape in a fruit fight. All right. Like that's just, if they have no skill, and they're up against skill, like you, you I'm sorry, but you, <laughs> you, you're not gonna have much of a chance. Um, so fight experience includes uh, one thing that, um, the statistical probability of beating a white belt with wrestling experience, however, if I am going up, against a white belt that was a collegiate wrestler or had wrestling experience in high school, that person is the biggest pain in the ass, male or female. I remember there was this um, 
Brooke, she was a teenager and she started, when she started wrestling in high school, she would come to the mats and I would be like, oh my God, are you serious? Like it was, yeah. So um, if you are sizing up your date, <laughs> thinking about if you, if, if, if things came to, to things, if you could take them, um, if he has wrestling experience that significantly decreases your chances, like you are going to have to have a couple of years of jujitsu before you could take on a wrestler. Like wrestlers are a huge pain in the ass. Um, you know, if he's done jujitsu, then if he's done jujitsu longer than you, um, that might be, <clears throat> you know, he would have more of an advantage. Um, if he is heavier and stronger than you, that is an advantage, but skill overcomes like strength and size okay and then also the willingness to fight so if we're talking about like a sexual assault um self-defense uh like we're talking about okay how long of a duration of time can you fight and by fight it can be like putting your um, feet on their hips just to like keep them away from you. It can be up kicks. It can just be moving, like squirming around, protecting your head, making sure that you keep on moving without getting knocked out. Like just almost like, you know when you're rolling, like I was watching this last night um, when we were training and some new white belt women were like, you know, in the mix and like just watching them fight meaning like just continuously move trying to impose their will it was fucking beautiful because you could just like see how they would respond in a self-defense situation like against sexual assault as a female like you could just see the fight in them and I, i'm getting goosebumps right now like that is just like such a beautiful thing to watch and to see so i mean ladies if you are on the mat um, and you decide to start rolling, just know that even if you're not pulling off, you know, submitting them, just increasing your ability to fight, it, meaning like the duration is great because you can either fight long enough for somebody to find you or fight long enough until they give up or, you know, like most people. Um, all right, so let's get into the third, <laughs> the third thing. Um, so there is this game that gets played okay and of course there's there's different levels to sexual assault um right so down here you know i would say like this is the sick fucks um these would just be the people who want to lay, get laid and they're being a, a bit aggressive about it, <laughs> a bit rude, and all the people um, in, in between. So we could have miscommunications down here. Maybe there was a case of, you know, boyfriend and girlfriend, there was prior consent, but consent wasn't given in that instance. Um, or it could be, you know, somebody that wants to get laid because they have low self-esteem and getting ass increases their self-esteem and they don't give a shit about the other person. They just need the ass for social status. Or you can go up to the people that, you know, are a bit sociopathic <laughs> and they have little care for like the other human, like all the way to people who are, um, who enjoy. So what was down here? So we have um, aggressive, we have, you know, need self-esteem. We have people that are power hungry. And then it just gets like more and more extreme after that. So like you, you know, when you first, <laughs> go on a date like obviously there's this right we're only talking about the worst case scenarios here like you know <laughs> like you have the pinnacle of humanity here you have the gentleman who asks for consent you know that is like oh my god I remember one time somebody like you know we were naked before penetration he was like is this okay with you and I was like 
yes, like, oh my God, you asked me for consent. Or like <laughs> now in my current relationship, it's just like, hey, you want to have sex? Like, yeah, sure. Or, hey, you want to have sex? Oh, like, I need to poop. Can, <laughs> can we do it like after dinner? You, you know, like, it's just, there's always that like a <laughs> level of like, hey, is it, okay if you put your penis in me at about 2 p.m. on Sunday you know what I'm saying all right um so there's asking for consent and then like then we get I don't know into here where it's like they watch some dating videos and um you know they kind of want to get laid they're not really asking for consent they're just kind of hoping they could just keep on making moves and if you don't say no they'll just keep on going and with with this group of people right here it's like this group of people like calling them rapists like they would not consider themselves rapists because that's you know that is a very strong word but if you don't ask somebody for consent like you can put any type of wording on it as you please. I mean, I could call fraud, you know, like uh, financial engineering, you know, like it, <laughs> it's amazing what putting names on things does. Okay. So yeah, so we have like all of this, like you might be, you know, with somebody that's asking for consent or you might be, you know, you don't know where the person is going to be like on this level, but for all the people that are here, I am sweating like a mofo. <laughs> it's hot in here. Um, for all the people down here, just like, no, for me, it's usually no, no. By the third, no, I say something like, I will choke you out. So that, that pretty much like takes care of this, half um with the with the verbal threatening and the verbal threatening you know can also take you into this half of the triangle as well uh, but what you want to do is uh you want to make sure that you are aware of the type of test that happens which is the game um that happens <laughs> during the date so if you are uh, with a, a person that you know, um, it could be a date, it could be a friend, like friend of a friend, your boyfriend's friend, whatever, um, there is a type of game that is played where your boundaries are being tested. So some examples of this I've heard plenty in, in the stories um, that I've researched. It's um, asking you if you want a drink, if you say no, they keep on pushing. It's um, uncomfortable touch. Like, have you ever been on a date before and they touch your knee and it's like, oh my God, that feels so good. And like other times they touch your knee and you're looking at them like, oh, like I really don't like that. Like if, if you feel that your um, inner monitor is doing something, like it is okay to just end the date there, to leave, to say like, oh, I just got a text, bye, see ya. Um, sometimes we feel that we need to uh, adhere to some social pressure or social situation. Like we feel bad if we like disrupt what's going on here. But for your own safety, if your inner um, being is telling you some something, um, definitely like listen to it and give yourself permission to leave in like any instance. And especially if you feel that the person is not respecting your boundaries from the get go. So the testing starts by like offering you a drink and not respecting your no. It starts by touching your leg. And if you aren't comfortable with it, like they, it's just a super creepy vibe. Um, <clears throat> see if I can do like other examples. Um, it could be like a controlling nature of like telling you where to sit. Um, it could be all of these things. So when it gets to like, let's say you do find yourself in a situation where, oh crap, things are escalating. Um, one thing that jujitsu will help with, it will help in your ability to threaten physical violence and to have the confidence to back it up. Uh, so there's a story, like I went to Africa and I hung out with the Maasai and the Maasai have a very interesting uh, way of blossoming into manhood. So you get, <laughs> you have a guy, right, with a spear and a shield, and that poor guy <laughs> has to go out and confront a lion. 
And the thing is, it's like, obviously the lion would be able to whoosh, in one strike and one swipe, but the, the dude has to have the confidence to fake out the lion. So this is what's happening here. Like the guy that's trying to impose his will either verbally or threatening physically is basically like that Maasai trying to fool you into thinking he's tough. And you, on the other hand, are also the Maasai guy being like, let me fool you. Uh, because realistically, like if this person had the confidence that he would get from doing like jujitsu or martial art or something like that, like then he wouldn't need to get like up here in this region right here when you get to like power hungry. Um, he, he wouldn't need to prey off of females in order to get that rush of dopamine or, or whatever in his brain, like doing jujitsu and martial arts, like you are like feeding that, you are feeding that in, in a healthy way. Like you're not power hungry, but you're like feeding your confidence, you know? And in most cases you get your ass beat all the time. Like you are humble <laughs> and confident at the same time, or at least, you know, try to be like, it's hard in your first couple of years. Um, so yeah, when you're dealing with somebody that is uh, like power hungry and loves that feeling of like being dominant, um, that is like where you have to, you know, be cognizant of that and like just be aware of that. So just know that like, you know, going into dating, if you have been sexually assaulted before, like doing jujitsu is a great way to be able to handle the, the touching and to be able to trust human contact again, which is very huge because then what could happen is if you don't get over that, then all of a sudden, you know, something could happen like in this area because you don't trust the word no and you're afraid to say no and you freeze and you know, like that's not good. Like that's, you know, you definitely want to, you definitely want to, like jujitsu is a great way to be able to train you again, to make you okay with physical contact. That way, you know, just in, in the off chance that you meet somebody that's like here, you know, then you'll, you'll be able to take care of yourself. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to make this video for you because I think that as women, it's like very healthy to go out there and get vitamin D. There's nothing wrong with that. Like we're not living back in the stone age of like having to be virgins until we're married. I'm sorry. Like it's <laughs> like, we should be able to like go out there and, you know, get all the vitamin D that, that we want. Like that's, you know, that's all the fun of like being in this human form is like the pleasure of that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but also like, it's good to be able to have, you know, that confidence and knowing that you can walk into a situation and, it's your decision, you know what I mean? Like to do it or to not do it and to know that you have that. Whew, I'm sorry about that. My phone ran out of storage and um, to know that you have that power and it is literally probably 90 degrees in here. <laughs> All right, so I am, I'm gonna turn on the AC and uh, <laughs> get cool before I go do some Muay Thai sparring. Um, so yeah, so I hope this was um, helpful for you. You know, if you are a female and you're getting on the mats, you know, you are doing a great job. Know that any time that you spend rolling is good. You're, you're working that fight exercise muscle and you are going to get more and more confident in physical confrontations to the point where like physical confrontations is, is literally your hobby. Like, what is jujitsu? Like, we are choking out our friends, our acquaintances every night on the mat. Like, if that's not training for sexual assault, I don't know what is because it's going to be with an acquaintance. Like, that's the statistical likelihood is going to be against somebody you know. So you're like, oh my God, I've been choking out people that I've known for like years now. This is like, you know, this is like breakfast. <laughs> like, no problem. Like, it's not... You know, like choking out somebody, it's not as awkward as like pulling a gun. Like that's permanent. You know what I'm saying? Like that is permanent. But choking out, like they just fall asleep. They wake up, like they feel stupid. Maybe you have some zip ties, hog tie them, call the cops. Yeah, you know, all the day's work. <laughs> all right, so my next video is gonna be on hog tying. <laughs> all right, if you've made it this far in this video and you haven't subscribed, 
I think it's time for us to be friends. Um, and until next time. Bye.